Good day everyone! Today, I'm going to discuss about the recursion in terms of its function, the definition, and also the importance. So, what is recursion? So, um, recursion is a programming technique in which a function calls itself directly or indirectly. It is a powerful tool for solving complex problems, but it can be difficult to understand and implement. Recursion is important because it is a powerful problem-solving technique that can be used to solve a wide, wide variety of problems. It is also a way of thinking about the problems that can lead to simple and elegant solutions. Recursion is also important because it is a funda fundamental concept is fun in functional programming. Functional programming is a programming paradigm that emphasizes the use of functions and immutable data structures. Recursion is used extensively in functional programming languages such as Haskell and the LISP. Overall, um, recursion is a powerful and important problem-solving technique that can be used to write concise, the readable, and efficient code. It is also a fundamental concept in functional programming. So, recursion can be used to solve a wide variety of problems, including the traversing data structures such as the trees and grubs, the searching for items in a collection, the solving sorting problems, or the traversing a tree and searching for an item in a sorted list or asserting a list and calculating the Fibonacci sequence and finding, finding the greatest common divisor of two numbers, the implementing of a quick sort algorithm, the implementing a backtracking algorithm, and lastly, the solving mathematical problems such as finding Fibonacci sequence or the greatest common divisors of two numbers. So that's all for today. I hope you understand about the record. Hi, good day everyone. My name is Joanna Maslog and today I will going to give you an example about recursion. So we have here or as you can see here, we have a formula for the factorial recursion which is the n factorial is equals to n times to the factorial of n minus 1. So if the recursion call is factorial to 3, therefore the value of n is 3. So we're going to put a box here for visualization. So since the value of n is 3, 3 factorial, then we are going to change all the n into 3 as its value. So based on the I mean based on the formula n factorial is equals to n times to the factorial of n minus 1, which is now changed into 3 times to the factorial of 3 minus 1, then the result would be 2 times to the factorial of 2 minus 1 as it's another call or function call since 3 minus 1 is 2 then that will result into 2 times to the factorial of 2 minus 1 as we follow the n minus 1 basis then after that we will gonna repeat the formula formula until it would return or the answer would return into 0 so 2 times to the factorial of 2 minus 1, the answer would be 1 factorial 1 times to the factorial of 1 minus 1 since 2 minus 1 is 1. Then 1 minus 1 that would be 0. Then it would return or the process would stop since it has reached into 0. So now I want you to focus on the last box that or on the rectangular shape box. <laughs> on the rectangular shape, yes. Because we are going to substitute its values. So 1 minus 1 is 0. But then 
zero would return a one. So the last box value is one. It is one. I'm gonna put it outside the box. So now, um, we will going to multiply it to the second box, which is the value of it is two since three minus one is two. So two multiplied by one my one as the value of the last box then the answer would be two then after that um we will gonna repeat its process like we're gonna multiply three as the factorial in the upper box yep we're gonna we're gonna multiply it by two so three multiplied by two is equals to six as the as two is the value of the last box so now we have 6 as the factorial of 3. So again, this is a concept of recursion wherein the method is called repeatedly such time that the base case could reach its could reach into 0. So right now, we will um, perform a short demo and how we can use the recursion in our program. So first in our class is that we must create a method beside our main method. So let's call this method speak. So the purpose of our speak is just to um, print the words hello world. So now let's try and see if it works. So as you can see, it didn't print the words hello world in our program. So the reason for that is that our method are not being called in our main method. So if we put the method here and try to run it, it will now print the hello world. So recursion means that calling the method itself so what if we are going to um, call our method within this method so speak then we try to run it so as you can see just like earlier there's a problem which means that there is a stack overflow here so it just means that the program can't handle the vast amount of data that is being served in the program. So, in order to solve this issue, we must apply the two types of cases, which is the base case and the recursive case. So, base case simply means that telling our program when to stop, and the recursive case, which means just that calling the method again. So, right now, we will um, put a parameter in our method. So, the number of times we want to print the hello world. So, let's just say we want to print this five times. So, right now, we are going to apply the base case. So, we will put a if statement. So here, the base case that we have is this one. The if n is equal to zero, it will return. Else, it will print the world the words hello world. So let's try to run it. So as you can see, there's still a problem with this. The reason is that we didn't decrement our parameter which is the n so the the number of times which is 5 did not change so it still um, execute this else statement so it will continue to print the hello world so in order to solve that we must decrement the n 
So right now we have implemented this one and we'll try to run it. So as you can see, it print the hello world five times. So let's explain how this works. So here in our method that we've created, which is this peak. So right now we have a um, parameter five. So upon running, it will then execute this method. So since our parameter is now five, it will then proceed in here. So it will check if our n, which is five, is equal to zero. If our um, parameter is not equal to zero, it will execute this else statement. So since five is not equal to zero, it will execute this and it will print the hello world and then it will decrement and now our our speak the parameter of our speak will now be four and then it will proceed here again and instead of five it will now be four so it will check again four is is equal to zero and it is not so it will execute this one and it will now be three so it will continue until it will reach the parameter zero here so if zero is equal to zero the program will stop so the base case now is um being used and the um recursive case is also being used so it is a sh so this um example is a basic um recursion demonstration